In Jesus' name we pray. And they saw me and they said, well, it is good to take a risk. That's what they told me. It's good to take risk. So if you are not willing to take risk, you may not be able to break your limit. Another thing is false consciousness. False consciousness. There are people who are fatalist. They believe that what must be, must be. There are those who believe in predest uh, pre uh, no, determination, predestination. And they believe that, well, uh, I don't need to struggle. I don't need to make any efforts. What God said that would be... In Jesus' name we pray. And the Lord shall make thee the head. Look at your amen. And the Lord shall make thee the head. And not the tail. And thou shalt be above only. Set yourself above only. Above only. You are going to convert it to prayer now. Say, God, I refuse to be below. Take me up. Oh God, take me up. Oh God, take me up. I refuse to come down. Oh God, take me up. I will be above only. I will be above only. I will be above only. Make me the head in my class. Make me the head in my office. Make me the head. I'm on my equals. Make me the head. Are you praying? Are you praying? Make me the head. Above only. Above only. Above only. Above only. Above only. That's what you are made for. Made for extraordinary. You are, that's what you are made for. Above only. Pray. Please pray. Above only. In Jesus' name we pray. Shout amen. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them had the light shined. Every darkness in your life Every darkness in that brain. You read and read and read and read and read and read and read. You don't understand. That darkness this morning will disappear. Your amen can, 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 can ascend. Your amen can ascend more. Every darkness in my life disappear in the name of Jesus. Oh, pure man of prayer and prayer. In Jesus' name, we prayed. I'm going to pray for the program this morning that the Lord will take over. I said the Lord will take over. The Lord will give us calm weather. The Lord will give us the brightest of weather. The Lord will give us the fairest of weather. Oh, put your mouth and decree it now. I said, God, take over this program now. Take over this program now. Take over this program now. Let your glory come down. Let your power come down. Pray. In Jesus' name, we'll pray. 
and for me, that all trans may be given unto me, and I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. I'm going to pray for our generous pretender, our Father in the Lord. God will lay his hand upon him. God will make him a different man today. As he come here to decree upon your head, every decree, he open his mouth of decree will come to pass. Open your mouth and decree upon our Father in the Lord. God will use him more than ever before. God will use him more than ever before. Pray for him. The convener of Youth Impact Academy. Pray for him. The Lord will use him more than ever before. Oh God, use the convener more than ever before today. Let your glory fall upon him. Let your anointing fall upon him. Pray for him. Pray for him. Pray for him. God will use him to bless you. God will use him to bless you. God will use him to bless you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this short moment of prayers. We trust you that every request that I be tabled before you this morning, you have given answer. Thank you, O God, because we are sure that we are not going to live empty. Something will happen to, uh, to us today that will make us to say, wow, we have never seen it in this fashion. Thank you for answer to prayers. In Jesus' name, we pray. Your amen can ascend. Hallelujah. Amen. No, you can do better than that. Hallelujah. Amen. One more hallelujah for my Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we give a clapping offering unto Jesus right now? I want to hear you. You can do better. Now we want to worship the name of Jesus. I need you to open up your hearts and Jesus will bless us even today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Can you shout it louder? Impart. I want to assure you before you leave here today, God will transform you and make you for extraordinary impact in Jesus' name. Let's rise up as we take our congregational song together. Arise, O youth of God. Arise, O youth of God, who have done with lesser things. Give heart and soul and mind and strength to serve the King of kings. Arise, O youth of God, his kingdom tarries long. Bring in the day of joy and peace and end the night of wrong. Arise, O youth of God, the church for you doth wait. As strength shall make your spirit strong, as service make you great. Lift high the cross of Christ. Tread where his feet have trod. Be loyal to the king of kings. March on, O youth of God. Arise, arise, the master calls for thee. Arise, arise, O youth of God. March on to victory. We'll listen to the orchestra and take off our stanzas. Arise, 
Our campus participants will want you to sit behind the choir and the first through there. We are sitting in the middle, so let's take the workshop sessions now. The DLSO for the the teenagers, you are having four sections there. We have the first one is for great impact through small actions. We're having another session for turning passion into purpose. And also we have from purpose to impact. And on that, that section, we also have a class for mentoring for impact. So you choose the one you want to participate in. Then for the campus, we have intentional fruitfuls, faithfuls on the journey of impact making. And also because you came. Then for the young professional professionals, we have a class for you on extraordinary habits for extraordinary impact. So, artisans, you should take your positions now, and you have 30 minutes for this workshop. We can start now. Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to hear from you. We ask that the Holy Spirit will guide us and bless every one of us through this teaching. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Today we come to this important workshop for senior secondary youths. During this special Impact Academy with a theme made for extraordinary impact. We are trusting God that because you are part of this program, your life will turn out as a life of extraordinary impact in the name of Jesus Christ. The topic before us for this workshop is turning passion into purpose. Turning passion into purpose. Can we echo it together? Turning passion into purpose. Turn to your neighbor and say, God will help you. Say it again. God will help you to turn your passion into purpose. May God confirm it in your life, in the life of every one of us, in the name of Jesus Christ. As a background to this discussion, we're going to look at Jeremiah chapter 1 in verse 4 and in verse 5. Please open your Bible to Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 and verse 5. The Bible says there, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth, out of the womb I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. What we see from this passage is that God said that before Jeremiah, who eventually became a prophet, was born, even before he was formed and put in the mother's womb, God had a purpose for his life. God ordained Jeremiah that he would rise up eventually and become a prophet to the nations. And that shows that everybody that God created, God created every one of us to accomplish a unique purpose. The purpose for which God created me, what he wants me to achieve, to accomplish in my lifetime, is different from what he created you for. What he wants you to achieve is different from what he wants your brother your sister from the same parents to accomplish. So it is important for us to discover the purpose for which God created us. If you look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26 in verse 16, you can read it later, the Lord Jesus Christ revealed about uh, Paul, who was at that time saw that he also appeared to him for a particular purpose. 
when you are saved, there is a purpose for which God saved you. Our prayer is that God will help us. We will all live a life of purpose. A life that aligns with the purpose for which God created us. It is therefore very essential for us to pay attention to our life, to discover our purpose. How do we discover our purpose? We look at our life, we examine our life, we will see pointers that will give us direction to what God wants us to live for. And it is important that we discover it very early. The earlier we discover the purpose of God for our life, it will help to save us from distractions, save us from engagements that are not profitable, engagements that will not align towards fulfilling our purpose. You see, one of the greatest tragedy people have on earth is that people run through their childhood days run through their youthful days, engaged in many, in many accomplishments, engaged in many, in many purposes in life. When they come towards the end of life, they discover that they lived all through their years outside the purpose for which God created them. And that will amount to living a wasteful life. Turn to your neighbor and say, you will not live a wasteful life. God will help you to find your purpose for life and to fulfill that purpose for which he created you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, how do you discover the purpose of God for your life? You do that prayerfully by observing, discovering, and knowing the passions in your life. You need to begin to examine your life. What are the things you like doing? What are the things that you are passionate about? What are the things that excite you most, the things that motivate you, things that you like doing even if there is no reward, even when nobody is going to pay you, but you like doing them. And these are good things, positive things that add value to life, add value to the church, add value to the society, add value to your parents, add value to your family. That could be a pointer to what your purpose in life is. The positive passions of your life as a young boy or girl should not be neglected. Let's take example from the life of David. David the shepherd boy. David, when he was a boy, discovered there was a passion in him. This passion in David was not his, his elder brother. They were not in any of his siblings. This special liking of to play instruments. He desired to learn how to play skillfully on the harp, and he spent time to learn it. And he was doing that as a passion, doing that with, as a hobby, doing that as something he likes doing. Little did he know that that passion to learn how to skillfully play the harp will create the room for him to be recommended one day to come into the king's palace to serve the king. And that opportunity of coming to the king's palace was also a preparation for his future because he will eventually become the king in that palace. So you see that the passions you see in your life as a young boy should not be neglected. Pay attention to them. That passion that David developed as a child, the passion of learning how to play skillfully on the harp, he never knew that that will help him to develop himself, to fulfill the destiny, the purpose of becoming the greatest psalmist, the greatest songwriter that ever lived here in this world. So as we end this introduction, it's important for us to determine to pay attention to your positive passions, not the negative passions. Negative passions, you kill them. But when you see positive passions in your life, do not neglect them. What do you do with them? You feed them, you nurture them, and you keep developing them because you can't tell how far they can take you in the journey of life. Let's look at this topic under three subheadings. Number one, decoding God's peculiar purpose for your location and existence individually. Look at that topic again, subtopic number one, decoding God's peculiar purpose. Remember that God's purpose for your life is peculiar to you. It is different from his purpose for the life of any other person that you know. And the purpose of God for you will be revealed from location to location. At every place you find yourself in life, there is a purpose for God for your life at that point, which will ultimately add up 
towards fulfilling your purpose here on earth. And it is important for you to understand that it is your personal responsibility to identify your purpose. Yes, people can help you. Your teachers in school can help you discover your purpose. They can help you to give you direction towards that purpose. Your parents can help you. They can guide you. Leaders in the church can help to discover your passions and the direction of your life. But it is you, your personal responsibility, your individual responsibility to decode this purpose of God for your life. The question is, how do I decode the purpose of God for my life? The scripture gives us the answer. Open the scriptures to Romans chapter 8 in verse 28. Romans chapter 8. In verse 28, can we read it together? One, two, go. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. What do we pick from that passage? As you grow in life, you need to be watching the events of your life, the circumstances of your life, the experiences of your life, the things you go through in life, the things that happen in your life, the opportunities that come your way, what people point at in your life, these are pointers to the purpose of God for your life. Don't neglect any of them. When God has a purpose for your life, this purpose will not be revealed in a full scale in one day. God will use several events, several experiences, several encounters that will be playing out along the journey of your life to point you to the direction of your purpose, the direction of your usefulness, the direction of your strength for you to live an accomplished life. Then for you to discover God's purpose for your life, there are three major keys that I'll be sharing with you that will help you to unravel, to decode the purpose of God for your life. Number one, a strong faith and confidence in God's positive purpose for your life. You need to have that confidence in God that God's purpose for your life is good and that if you follow the purpose of God for your life, you will not regret it. That if you follow the purpose of God for your life, your life will be fulfilled. You are not pursuing fame. You are not pursuing self-glory. You believe there is a purpose for which God created you. You anchor that faith on the revelation of the word of God. Let's look at the word of God in Jeremiah chapter 29. Open your Bible to Jeremiah chapter 29. We are reading in verse 11. Jeremiah 29 in verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. You need to believe that scripture. You need to internalize. You need to pray based on that scripture. God, you have a purpose for my life. Reveal that purpose to me. So number one key is have a strong faith and confidence in God's positive purpose for your life. And that purpose will be revealed unto you and you will fulfill it in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at verse 12 of that same um, Jeremiah chapter 29. Verse 12 says, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. When you have developed that strong confidence and faith in God in number one, number two, you engage in steadfast prayers, seeking divine direction, seeking divine guidance towards your purpose for living. Ask God, not a one-off thing, but every opportunity you have before God, every opportunity you have to come to a program like this, you are praying, oh God, guide my decisions in life, guide my steps in life, guide the passions and purposes of my life, so that I will not deviate from the purpose for which you created me. If you pray, the Bible says, you shall call upon me, you will go and pray, and I will hearken unto you. God will hearken unto you and reveal unto you. How will God now reveal them to you? That leads us to key number three, searching for purpose. Pointers. We have faith in God, number one. Number two, you are seeking the face of God, praying for direction. Number three, you are searching for pointers. You are the one that will be searching, examining your life, examining the circumstances of your life, and you will find the answers to the pointers of what your future, what your purpose in life should be. You're asking yourself some questions as you're examining your life, your life circumstances, and the engagement and the experiences. We are in life. Do I feel most pained? 
what happens that if I see this thing happening in my family, it pains me. If I see this thing happening in the church, it pains me. If I see this thing happening in the church, it pains me. And I wish I could do something to solve this problem. That could be a pointer to what God wants you to solve in, at that point on your lifetime. You ask yourself the question, what makes me happy? What do I get happiness and joy in if I do it? What problem do I derive joy solving? Issues that happen in your family, in your church, in your, in your, in your society, in your school. And you, you are happy when you are able to rise to that challenge. It is going to give you a pointer to what your purpose in life, either at that point or generally in life, could be. You're asking yourself another question. What kind of messages do I enjoy creating and forwarding to other people? What messages do you like sharing? What do you like to send to people that you believe can help them? It could be a pointer to the purpose of God for your life. And you're also asking yourself the question, where do I feel I would make greater impact if I develop my gifts, if I develop my talents, if I applied myself the more? Where will I make more impact in the society, in the church, in the, in the school? That answer to that question can help you discover your passion and ultimately now help you to discover your purpose for your life. As you prayerfully examine your life and find answers to these and related questions, it is important for you to note that there is a big difference between ambition and the purpose. You know, purpose is God-given. God created you for this. Ambition is your personal desire, your personal wishes, your personal feeling that this is what I would want to accomplish. So it is important for you to draw the line between ambition and then purpose. Find out the divine purpose and then ensure that the ambitions of your life do not go away, do not stray away, do not distract you from that purpose of God in your life and for your life. Another thing we also need to point out here is that your position, the, the position you occupy in your family, the position you occupy in the church, the position you occupy in the place of work on your school, does not necessarily mean your purpose in life. The position might be good, they may be helpful, but you need to find out how do I use my positions in life, my career, the, the, the responsibilities that are given unto me, how do I use all of these things to achieve the purpose of God for my life. My prayer is that God will help you to discover his ultimate purpose, why he created you, what he wants you to live for. That is the time your life will become meaningful and purposeful and impactful. And by the grace of God, you will live a life of extraordinary impact in Jesus' name. Let's go to point number two because of our time. Point number two, discerning and pursuing your passion for a legacy of extraordinary impact. Discerning and pursuing your passion for a legacy of extraordinary impact. Remember, it is your duty to discern it. It is your duty to discover your passion and it is your duty to now pursue your passion. When you now pursue your passion, it is that passionate pursuit that will make you to leave a legacy of extraordinary impact. Your life will not be ordinary. Your life will be extraordinary. Let's look at the Bible in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29. It talks about somebody who wishes to be extraordinary. Somebody whose life will be outstanding. What is the secret behind such a life? Proverbs chapter 22, in verse 29. Seest thou a man... Diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. That is the scriptures. The Bible says that if you see a man who is passionate about what he is doing in life, that man is a man that will excel. He will stand out. He will be extraordinary. What secret are we picking there? Anything you want to do in life, ensure it is something you can do with passion. Something that aligns with your passion. Don't run after money first. Don't run after fame. Run after passion. 
discover your passion, the things you are passionate about, things you can do even without being paid. That is what will make you stand out extraordinarily because you will commit yourself to do it exceptionally well. Now let's go further and discover how we can be extraordinary in life. What are the things we can do to discern and pursue our passion so as to be able to live a life of legacy number one? We have talked about it over and over. Find your passion. Make sure you know what your passions are and follow your passion. Number two, fine tune your passion. As you grow up in life, you will discover that at different stages of life, different kinds of passion, sometimes conflicting passions, will come up. So you need to fine tune your passion to ensure that they don't conflict. You don't allow this passion to now cancel the other passion. Number three, you filter your passion. As you have these multiple passions rising up in you and developing at one point, filter them. Which of them aligns with the word of God? Any passion that doesn't align with the word of God, kill it, remove it from your life. Any passion that is not in line with your values, scriptural values, godly values, you remove them from your life. Every value that will not promote good things in the society, value that will destroy lives, passion that will destroy life. You know that this is not of God, this is not a positive one. You destroy those ones out of your life. After that, you feed your passion. You make out time for your passion to develop. Read books that will feed your passion. Attend seminars and workshops, trainings like this, that will help your passion to be fueled, to be fed. The next one, focus your passion to pursue what brings a sense of fulfillment. Focus your passion. Don't allow distractions. Don't allow wavering from here to here. Focus. Remember you have a purpose, that these passions are supposed to help you achieve your purpose in life. The next one, follow your passion and meet distractions. There will be distractions. Friends will bring ideas, bring engagement, bring this one, bring this one to call your attention. Ensure that you follow your passion and avoid all those distractions that don't align with your passion and your purpose. Then finally, you commit yourself to fulfilling your passion so as to increase your happiness in life. It is when you are passionate about what you do and you live a life that is passionate, that is when your value, your happiness will be more enhanced in this world in which you are living. Because of time, let's go to point number three. Point number three is developing your passion into purpose. Developing your passion into purpose. How do you develop your passion into purpose? Are there lessons we can learn. Are there examples?